The relevance of every detail of the Torah in every aspect is enormous, especially so when we learn of the journeys and the stories of our forefathers and foremothers, Abraham, Yitzchak, Yaakov, Sarah, Rivka, Rachel, and Leah, the foundation upon which we, the Jewish people, stand and from whom we have received, bequeathed us an enormous amount. I know I'm using the word enormous for the second time in, what, 20 seconds? Because we're talking about something enormous. There we go, time three. An enormous amount of spiritual and physical blessings and soul powers that must be tapped into. I want to give a shout out to Lady Gurkha. Hashem tells Avraham, the first of the three forefathers, that his name should be changed to Avraham. And his wife's name, the first of the matriarchs, the four matriarchs, the four foremothers of the Jewish people, Sarai, should be changed to Sarah. Thereby changing their fate in terms of the, I don't know if everything I'm going to say right now is, is valid, but the idea of the astrological calculations and zodiac signs and constellations and all that stuff, whatever is valid of it, um, as it related to them having children, which at that point in time was they would not merit to have a child together. But now that their names were changed, that fate, astrologically speaking, was also changed. Although we are above the whole celestial order. And actually, interestingly speaking, in this week's Torah portion, Hashem tells Abram to look at the stars. And like the stars will be your children. And the word that the Torah uses for look is habet or habet, which literally means look down. And as our rabbis tell us, Hashem lifted Avram above the stars and said, that's how you should look at it. Yeah, I've created a system here, but you and your children are above this order. Guys, it's starting to rain. I, you might have to come out of the pool, okay? Before this whole name-changing thing, Sarai told Avram that he should have a child with her handmaid, Hagar, whom we'll hear more about momentarily. And indeed, Hagar had a son named Yishmael. And it was only after Yishmael had already been born that Hashem changed the names of Avram and Sarai to Avram and Sarah and promised Avram that he would have a child with Sarah, from whom this special nation, the Jewish nation, would be born. Of course, this is Yitzchak. But interestingly, Avram says, you know what? I'll be more than content. In fact, I would be happy if only Yishmael would be the one to receive all this blessing. Why would Avram say that? He knows, of course, how amazing, how righteous, how holy Sarah, his wife, with whom he didn't have a child yet, is and how Hagar was an Egyptian princess and uh, wasn't so holy. Well, just to cut to the chase, the answer is Hagar, who was an Egyptian princess who converted and said, I'd rather be a maid in the household of Avram and Sarah, at that point, Avram and Sarai, rather than be a queen. That's even the way that her own father, Pharaoh, perhaps the greatest ruler on earth at the time, that was his thinking. She was extraordinarily righteous. She was extraordinarily holy. And of course, she also did her best to raise her son Yishmael in this way as well. And that, very simply explains to us why Abraham said, I would be totally fine with Yishmael being the one. But no, Hashem chose us, all of us, biological children of Abraham, Yitzchak, and Yaakov, spiritual children, converts. We must realize how much power we have. We must tap into this power. We must shine like the stars. We already do. We just need to be conscious that we do so we can bring our light into every encounter with another. Bring this light into everything you do, into every part of your life. Get in Mashiach mode. Rejoice. Dance. Love. Acts of goodness and kindness is what it's all about. Study more Torah. Do another mitzvah with more passion and energy. And particularly, if I may suggest, this week, after Shabbos, if you haven't yet, do the special mitzvah of Kiddush Levana with extraordinary rejoicing. And if you don't know what that is, then please, WhatsApp 347-719-2218, and I will gladly tell you, of course, not on Shabbos. Have a wonderful Shabbos. Mashiach, now that's the point we must demand verbally from Hashem. Not only in our actions, as we just mentioned, that's super important, but also verbally, also with our words. We say, we want Mashiach now to Hashem, and Hashem listens.